The Avanda Group offers an interesting story of transformation of an old Indian family-run business going global. Its group companies, Crompton Greaves and Balarpur Industries, were old Indian blue chips that ventured out in the early 2000s, testing waters on a global scale through some strategic acquisitions. But before they could reap the benefits of size and spread, they got caught in a slowdown and crisis. In Crompton Greaves, the impact was stark. So with the US, Europe and even India showing signs of a pickup, is the worst over? That's what I asked Chairman Gautam Thapar. Yeah, I think uh, we are, at least as far as uh, CG goes, we are at an inflection point because uh, Indian businesses are, are growing nicely except, you know, industrial systems and that's related to the, uh, to the economy and the fact that there's a lack of investment in the industrial sector. Power systems is growing as stable, consumer is growing as stable. And overseas also things have now started to improve. We've cut our costs, we've restructured. And so, so yeah, we're looking forward at least in terms of our uh, order book pipeline is at much better margins today than, than they were a year ago or the year previous to that and all that. So if you have an order to delivery cycle of 18 months, then whatever I'm taking into my order book um, in this quarter, last quarter, will actually get delivered in the second quarter, second half of next year at a higher margin. So from that point of view, yes, we are we are certainly seeing the inflection point around the world also. In certain other areas which had slowed down, smart grids and all, we are really now beginning to see a pickup happening. I think whatever is happening in Europe has happened. I think the, the fear that somehow or the other, the whole thing would explode that or implode, uh, that has not happened. So people have the confidence now that uh, they're, they're beginning to spend. Tapper has had quite a run in Indian business. In the mid-90s, he entered his grandfather's company and worked his way up, reviving the fortunes of first Balarpur Industries and then Crompton Greaves, both blue chips that felt the heat of competition as India's economy opened up. In 2005, he began venturing out when CG made news by acquiring Powell's, a company that manufactured power transformers in Belgium. So what was the rationale for the acquisition? And how has the Go Global piece fitted in for the company? Well, to me, where we are today, at least in two businesses, not the consumer business, the other two is, is very much an outcome of that. Because Indian companies in manufacturing and engineering have no technology base. Everything that we have in our technology base comes from outside. So there's no incentive for R&D. And more importantly, it is not your customer who or the market that's driving your technology development. And if you look at technology development and investment in research and development and you know the cost of doing that, you also need to be able to build a market rapidly enough to defray that cost. I mean, I can't spend $500 million on a technology development and then have a market in India for the product of two and a half thousand crores. I will never recover that, you know, that investment. So in, in the technology area now, scale starts becoming very important because the money you're putting into developing new technology needs to have the scale for you to recover that money. To begin with, was the acquisition to get IP and, and, and compete yes. in your own market over here? Yes. And did the realization yes. that it's better to play a scale game overseas yeah. come after the acquisition? No, it was both. At the end of the day, yes, once you went out there and you saw what you were missing in technology, in, in engineering, in, in engineering design, in many of those things, and you're like, oh, you know, and this is not a big company. Powell's when he bought it was, you know, at best a small, medium-sized company. And in European terms, it was a small company. But the level of what they were doing there and the level of technologies that they have, especially in certain categories of transformers, was fascinating. But my question is, when you did acquire Powell's in the, in the scheme of history, yeah. it was a stressed asset, which you turned to. Sure. It had operations in sure. different countries. Uh, what worked in that turnaround? What was the Indian intelligence that worked in the turnaround of a Belgian company? They were the, the I, if I be honest with you, the concept of working capital management was non-existent in Powell's. Really? Yes. They, we were shocked when we, um, and I think that's a huge Indian technology, which is how to make one rupee work ten times rather than four times. How, how to rotate it, it my money. It's a factor of where we, we yeah, work. It's the way right? how we've been capital starved, even till today, we are capital starved all our lives. So at the end of the day, we learned to make one rupee rotate five times instead of three times. In their case, we found that they were rotating a euro barely in once a year, whereas we could end up rotating it thrice a year. Mm. 
So that's the, you know, so moment you've got that financial muscle to tighten everything else, you know, you've got the cash out, you paid off your, you paid off all your liabilities, suddenly you've got a huge cash coming out of that system, which was locked up in the, in the, in the working capital cycle. So that, that success propelled you to do a whole series of acquisitions. Yeah, so you when, were on an overdrive no, all the way we to went, we 2010. Went there, but we, were, we went there, but then when you went there, you realized that there were things missing in Powell's, uh, you know, uh, what do you call technology. So Powell's was up to 500. They didn't have 765 kV. So when we bought the Hungarian facility, they had 76, 765 kV technology, which ultimately was deployed with power grid here. Mm -hmm. We didn't have 765. CG's uh, technology at that time was maximum 430, 440 kV. The presence in global markets allowed CG to be a step ahead of the Indian market, while also giving it the essential technical know-how to compete with the best. Between 2005 and 10, the company went into an acquisition overdrive, buying up companies across the globe. But ironically, it was two years later, after the global crisis in 2010, that problems started mounting up. Why did that happen? The uh, sales to delivery cycle is 18 months. So when I hit 2008, 2009, the order book was based on orders that had been taken before the crisis hit. So I had good margins, I had everything else in there. But when you look at the orders being taken in in 2009, late 10, etc., margins had shrunk considerably. All right, okay, because we were out there now competing for whatever business we could get. At, at the same time, the lack of integration in the overseas operations, all right, means uh, a lack of integration in your supply chain, a lack of integration in how your different plants are taking orders and loading up, a lack of integration in terms of all plants qualified for all customers. Did the slowdown yeah. come a little too early in your globalization? Uh, you no, know, the crisis you, came too early. Absolutely. Too early because just when you were integrating, yeah. you had the slowdown, which made you recalibrate. So, if the slowdown hadn't happened at that period, the kind of order slowdown, where would you be? Well, we were we were growing at that time in uh, middle double digits across the board. So, you take three years of that growth, continuing with those kind of margins that we had, etc. You would be well, probably eighteen, twenty thousand crore in size with a very different uh, balance sheet, everything else. The slowdown in CG came just when it was getting ready to leverage on its acquisitions and integrate the back end. Has that taken a beating and will this company be able to revive its earlier ambitions? More on that when we return.